Hello friends, today with a heavy heart I have to confirm the news that one of our fellow YouTubers, Emily Hartridge, passed away at 8.30 yesterday morning London time. Emily has been a long time YouTuber and has become famous from her series of 10 Reasons Why and was involved in an unfortunate accident yesterday at 8.30 London time just half a mile away from her home. As a YouTuber and part of this community, I wanted to recognize Emily, de dedicate this episode to her, and also ask you to keep hearing your thoughts and prayers. From the Urban Home Stanton channel, and Mrs. Wizard and myself, Emily, rest in peace. So like every of one of our projects, we are going to go here in our scrap pile and we are going to look for something that might be appropriate for our project. And I think that this piece has a lot of character, what do you think? And with uh, just a few cuts, we can have what we want out of it, right? Okay. okay. If today is your first time visiting with us, I want you, I want you, <laughs> I want to extend you a very warm welcome and invite you to browse over our 400, almost 400 videos arranged in playlists. As we're coming and you're going to find something both entertaining and enjoyable. If you have been here before but you have not subscribed, do subscribe. If today is your birthday, we want to wish you a very happy birthday. Welcome friends, today we have another fun episode for you and one that every skill level woodworker can undertake and again the theme is we found the wood in our scrap bin. So today we're going to make a caddy that is going to hold on two uh, glasses of wine and be attached on top of a bottle of wine so you will easily transport it. You don't have to transport three things, you hold the, the bottle and transfer one, right? Yep. Let's see if that will work. And this is the idea. So stick around if you want to see how we're going to do that. Now it is clear that this is from a previous project. As you can see, we have a nice bevel of 45 here. But for this project, this is not going to be useful. So we just need to square it off, right? Uh, and maintaining as much of the, the remaining of the wood as we can. So we're going to try to be as close to this line as possible while getting rid of the bevel. And we're going to do that at our table saw. So. Nothing fancy here. We're going to raise our blade. Maybe. Uh. I think we're good there, what do you think? Good. And I think we did pretty darn good not wasting anything. What do you think? Yeah. Alright, so and that has a nice little detail here. I wonder if we should repeat it here. Now we like a lot of character and a lot of people wouldn't use these pieces of wood but I prefer them like that, right? I prefer the knots. Yeah, the knots are beautiful. Sometimes that creates a, a little bit of difficulty when you work with them, but in general I, I like them that way. So now we're going to get ready for the next step. 
of the process. So we have a bottle of wine here and I also have my set of Fostner beads and what we're going to do it doesn't have to be exact but we need to find something that it is that's probably too close you think? Too small, it won't go through. Maybe a little bigger for Maybe even a little bigger bottle, right? Yeah, and it will it just come down. down. Yeah. A little bit on the neck, right? So this will be the Fosner bit we're going to use. But first we need to find the exact middle of this board. Again high tech here. We are using another board as a straight edge. We spare no expense for high tech equipment in this channel, right? And of course the best way to do that is go between the two corners and then the other two corners and where we have the X meeting, the two, two, the two lines meeting, this is the absolute perfect center of this board. Again, you don't have to need a lot of equipment, you don't have to need, you don't have to have a lot of equipment and here is our center and now we're going to get ready to make the the opening for the bottleneck the bottleneck not the bad bottleneck the good bottleneck mm -hmm. so now we need to find the middle of the board so we will make the appropriate opening for our glasses I'm confused of what you're doing. I'm worried about what I'm doing. You also need to know the distance of that to the edge. Mm -hmm. So they will be identical, mm -hmm. right? Well, you need to tell our, our viewers what you're doing so they know. Well, so what I did was... I put it about where I wanted it from the edge. And I counted how many marks and then I divided it by two. And I counted backwards. But you didn't come come to here? Nope. No, I went from the line to the line. Okay. From here to here and found the middle. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to see how far up is this spot. And it's almost two, so we could say two and move the dot so it's an even two. It's whatever you want. Or one and three-fourths. Decide. This is called designing by the feet of your pants, folks. Actually, if you put that and it is there, you're going to be in the middle without measuring anything. And we do that with the first one. Because you were doing it. So I let you do it. See, I'm not a micromanaging person. You don't need to erase it. it Just will so be which one it is. Alright, so let's set a little bit of a stand. So our little, no, those things, honey. The pieces of wood. Use these. Yes, to stand it so I can make a hole. Oh, good grief. You ready? Yes? Yes.
So we have our bindle hole complete and now we're going to change Fosner beads to make the other two holes, right? Yeah. Now the question is what size Fosner bead do you think we need for the fairly narrow because most wine glass stems are not very, you know, big. Since none of my sizes is fairly narrow. Well, surely you have something. Don't call me surely. One of these might work. This is not too small. Not understanding. If we use the, that one and it needs to be bigger, we can just use a bigger one. No, you can't. There is no way to do that. Once the hole is made, you cannot en enlarge it. Now a paddle bit will also work for this. You don't need a, a Fosner bit. You want to what you call it? What do you want me to do? It is tiresome. I, I didn't know if you want to clamp it. Okay, you can clamp it. You can stop the recording. There. So we have our our openings all made and by the way if you were to make a wider piece of wood, you can potentially fit four glasses, right? Right. This is the piece of wood we had, so we went with two. Okay. But um, the basis of the product project is done. Now we need to create an opening here for the glass to slide in. And again, an opening here for the glass to slide in. Um, are we going to finish it? Yeah, we'll sand it and see what we want to do for a finish. Okay. And we need to soften it at least to match that, right? Because this is kind of a hard edge. Alright, so we'll be right with you so shortly. Straight out. By giving it a little bit of an angle, you're going to make it a little easier for the glass to actually slide in and out, right? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't need to be a tremendous amount of angle, but just a little bit, as you can see here. And again, we're going to do the same on the other side. The idea is to be very symmetrical. Don't go too close on it. No. I mean, I try to be as okay, much as you want. Yeah. Let's just measure how far apart that is. So that's a half inch out to an inch. And now we're going to go to our bandsaw and cut these openings. Oh.
Okay, you can use that if you want to make sure that they're similar. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's where the glass is going to slide in and sit then on its face. Right, I mean, you can use the cutoff piece to see if... Okay, good. And we're going to do the same on the other side. And we're going to be back with you. So I'm going to give the piece a little extra character and we're going to create a little bit of a, a rounding on each corner. Like it? Do you want me to go here or not? No, not on the end, I don't think. Be careful with the knot. I did it on the wrong side, so I guess we'll do it on both sides now. I think we're going to do all the sides the same. Huh? Yeah. So flip them over. Okay. okay. We need to knock that off with sanding. One more side. What side? This one. It's done. What are you talking about? This one. It's this done. Even. What do you mean it's not even? This was the original, right? Yeah. So our curve on this side is much bigger. We need to match them. Don't you think? Okay, we need to yep. knock this off and, knock it off. and then we should be done to do our test, right? Mm -hmm. What do you have against machines?
you taking it off? Yep. Okay, good. Be careful with the knot when you reach the knot. Again, this is not a detail you have to do, especially if you don't have a router, that would be very hard to achieve, right? Yeah. But it gives a little bit of extra character to the piece. Knots don't like anything, cutting, routing. I mean, I could drive those if you want to. I thought you did that side already. No, I did this side. Okay. Unfortunately, we couldn't use the router with the fence which has the attachment for the dust collection because this piece was kind of irregular and we couldn't... You can only do that with straight pieces, right? Otherwise, probably we wouldn't need to sand at all, since the router provides a finish, finish look. And what we're doing now is we're knocking off a little bit of ridge that left, because we routed both top and bottom sides. So we could leave that unfinished, but we prefer to finish it to bring the grain a little bit even more out. We think this is a beautiful piece of wood, right? Mm -hmm. And we're going to use grapeseed oil, kind of appropriate for something that holds wine, right? It sure is. Wine glasses, I mean, not wine. And wine. And it just, I hope that the the grapeseed oil will bring this out. It's just amazing looking to me. Don't you agree? Yeah. Wow, look at that. Isn't that just beautiful? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. It's awesome. And you can see how just a little bit of oil on a piece of uh, display it's not furniture, what do you would call this? Oh, it's like an accessory. You know, I don't have a name for it yet. What is it called? Wine caddy accessory? Wine, Wine caddy? Wine caddy. Are we playing golf now? Yeah. Alright, I think that looks awesome. I think that looks absolutely amazing, smashing. What do you guys think? I hope you agree with us. I, I think the little oil makes the wood come alive. The grain it's looks... It's almost like honey. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Again, when it, with every oil finish, you will have to redo it every few months. It dries out. When it dries out to protect the wood. Otherwise, it provides not only a good look, but also protects the wood for accidental spills. Mm -hmm. for those days that you have a little too much grape juice. Oh, I don't know when that happens. Well, it happens. never too much. Happens on occasion. All right, so we will be back to show you how. And we are finished with our project. As you can see, 
it's a very nice display for for you and a significant other or a friend and again you can modify that to hold more than two glasses uh, we just made it to hold two glasses at this stage mm -hmm. right yeah it's really beautiful the color and the size of the holes that we made are you know pretty standard so it could be a little bit bigger a little bit snug but it's going to work for most everyone stems. I hope you enjoyed this episode from today. And if you did, please smash that like button. If you didn't, smash the other button twice. Share, like, subscribe, and comment. Let us know what you thought of this episode and what else you want to see in the channel. Again, this episode is memorated. Is, uh, again, this episode is dedicated in the memory of Emily Hartridge. And we are going to see you, I hope, in a much happier circumstance during our midweek show and our next weekend show. From the Garage Wizard, Miss Wizard and the Urban Homesteading channel, we bid you a great week.